What is energy balance? How do we actually extract energy from our food? And how exercise and what we eat combine to impact things like body composition and overall health. What happens when we eat food of any kind? And how is that actually converted into energy as a way of framing up the discussion around weight loss, weight maintenance, weight gain, and body composition? It's a great question. And like you said, this is one of those things where you know people use the term calories in, calories out. What is a calorie? Because I think a lot of people don't quite understand this. So a calorie just refers to a unit of energy, of heat specifically. Well, when you think about the balance of energy in versus energy out, it sounds very simple. First of all, you've got to realize that the energy inside of the equation is more difficult to track than people think. So one, uh, food labels uh, can have up to a 20% error in them. Really? Oh yeah. So yeah. 100 calorie, is something listed as 100 calories per serving, it could, what's actually in there could be, could be 80, 80 or 120. Right, exactly. So now let's look at the energy out side of the equation, right? And so your energy out is a few different buckets. The first one and the biggest one is your resting metabolic rate, so your RMR. And that for most people is anywhere from 50 to 70% of your total daily energy expenditure. Now, people use the term metabolic rate and energy expenditure kind of interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. So your total daily energy expenditure is the summation of all the energy you expend in a day. Walking right? upstairs, Everything. exercise if you do it. Fidgeting, okay. yeah. Plus your resting metabolic rate. Right, so resting metabolic rate is a big part of that, but it's not the only thing. So that's usually about 50 to 70 percent. And sedentary people will be on the higher end of that. So it'll be a bigger portion, whereas people who are more active, it'll be a little bit lower, not because their metabolic rate is lower, but because they're expending a greater percentage of the calories from physical activity. Then you have something called the thermic effect of food, which is a relatively small percentage of your total daily energy expenditure. It's about five to 10%. Uh, and very difficult to measure. And usually what researchers do when they're kind of looking at this stuff is they just kind of make an assumption about it. They use a constant. That refers to the amount of energy it takes to extract the energy out of food. So think about your body kind of like a car, right? You don't just have gas in your tank and it spontaneously starts up, right? Like you have to have a battery so you put in energy so you can get the energy out of the, the petrol that you have in your car. So that's the TEF bucket and the BMR bucket. Then we go to physical activity and physical activity is essentially two parts. There's exercise, which is kind of your purposeful movements. Like you go out for a walk, you do a training session, I mean, whatever, any purposeful activity. And then you have what's called NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which I think is actually a really cool. I was actually hanging out with somebody last night and I was noticing them, they, they were fidgeting their feet and their, their fingers. And I said, have you always been pretty lean? And they were like, yeah, I never really had a pro problem maintaining leanness. And when you look at the obese resistant phenotype, people think they have high BMR or they exercise a lot. It seems to be as neat. They tend to, if they overeat, they just spontaneously increase their physical activity. Now people get neat confused. I've heard people say, well, I'm going to go out for a walk to get my neat up. That's not neat. Neat is not something you can consciously modify. What you're doing there, if it's purposeful, it's exercise. So for example, if I, when I'm talking, if I'm waving around my hands, if I'm tapping my feet, if I'm whatever, that's neat. But you know, trying to like get yourself, well, I'm just going to tap my foot more. Well, now if I'm consciously having to do this, then my focus, I mean, you, you know how the brain works. It's very hard to do. You know, you don't really do two things at once. Right. You kind of switch quickly between tasks, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. The next thing is a lot of people weigh very sporadically. And I'll tell people like, if you're going to make an intentional weight loss a goal, and again, th this can be different for different people, but typically I I tell people weigh in first thing in the morning or after you go to the bathroom, do it every day and take the average of that for the week and then compare that to the next week's average. The reason I, I recommend doing that is so I'm, I've had it before where week to week, my average didn't change, but between the lowest weigh in from a previous week and the highest weigh in might have been like eight pounds. So if you're somebody who just randomly is weighing in and you're eating in a calorie deficit and you just weigh in one day where you just whatever reason holding some more fluid, then you oh, see, this isn't working. When in reality, your average might be dropping. Believe it or not, uh, weight fluctuations are actually identified as a major reason why people get discouraged from weight loss. Now, if you look at the literature overall on exercise and appetite, it's not always what you'd expect. Consistently, it seems to show that exercise actually has an appetite suppressant effect. So um, people don't tend to compensate, at least fully, for the amount of movement they do. And there is some evidence that you've probably heard people say, well, exercise is a really poor weight loss tool, right? Like it, like if you figure out how many calories you should be burning from it and you do that, you end up getting less weight loss than you than you would predict. Well, one thing I would say is that exercise independent of anything that happens with your body weight, you will be healthier. So exercise is one of the only things that will actually improve your biomarkers of health without even losing weight. It, like it'll improve your insulin sensitivity, inflammation, all that stuff. So everybody out there looking for a hack to be healthier, exercise is the hack. When you're talking about weight loss, people miss the point of exercise, I think. You know, there's some work that can't
came out from Herman Ponser as well that basically showed like, well, if you do 100 calories from exercise, you have a like 28 calorie reduction in your basal metabolic rate in response to that. So it's kind of like this constrained energy expenditure model. But what I would say is, okay, well, there's still a net of 72, right? So it's still okay. And the other thing is, I think the effects of exercise on weight loss are actually more due to what it does to appetite. Um, so if you look at people who lose weight and keep it off for a number of years, kind of outliers because most people don't keep it off for years, over 70% of them engage in regular exercise. Of people who do not keep weight loss, uh, like maintain weight loss, less than 30% exercise regularly. So now that's just a correlation that doesn't necessarily prove causation, but there are some pretty compelling studies showing that exercise increases your sensitivity to satiety signals. So basically you can have the same satiety signals, but you're more sensitive to them when you exercise. Or now some people, again, that's, you know, studies report averages, right? And there's individual data points. So there are some people who at least anecdotally report that exercise makes them more hungry. That's completely valid. It's now, it could be their beliefs around it. It could be a number of different things, but it's important to understand that there is individual variability.